exactly. and and the purpose of that, in my opinion, is to break down the souls, to get the souls, to get the, because see, ultimately, I think this battle is really not about money. It's really about the human soul. In other words, by getting people to take the mark, which must be, you know, a mark of allegiance to communism and you know, there might be a supernatural element, like an alien thing coming in, too, which is not alien at all. But, I mean, you know, there may be a supernatural component to it that comes in that, that becomes like the beast, if you will, that's worshipped. And, I mean, but we are, you can see that in a global consolidation like that, no one could buy or sell unless they were somehow marked and in the system. Well, you, you, you did really good explanation in one of your podcasts I was listening to, Zeph, when you were talking about we're in this cosmic battle, in a sense, and we're here to be gladiators, in a sense. Mm-hmm. And, and you're correct. I mean, we have the age-old struggle between God and Satan. Uh, Satan, being a created being, being the most powerful angel God ever created, decided to work against God, created, brought, brought in the first sin in the universe, and now is being played out through those who either were worship God or worship Satan. So you're absolutely correct. The thing that we're seeing being put together is the kingdom of the Antichrist. And that's what you see in Scripture where it says everything is going to come down to the point where everybody will have to buy or sell via this mark, and taking this mark is acknowledging this this Antichrist is God and rejecting the true God. And this is exactly what we're coming down to. You're yeah. perfectly correct. Second death. Point of no return. Point of no return. Writ- taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Taken out, that's right. With no possibility of ever going, being able to go back in. Now, you also had discussed the idea of twice dead. Yes. You mentioned that in your broadcast, in your podcast that you did mm-hmm. uh, on gang- gang stalking. I thought that was very good. Mm-hmm. And that's actually out of, uh, jo- excuse me, it's actually out of Jude. Yeah. where it talks about these people that are twice dead. It's saying that there are people who are alive but are twice dead. Well, what, is the, what are the two deaths? Well, first death is the physical death. Right. And then Revelation chapter 20 tells us that the second death is being cast into the lake of fire. Okay, now it also talks about the first resurrection. Now, those who've died physically and are resurrected back to life, uh, at that point, that's the first resurrection over whom the second death has no power. Mm-hmm. But there are people, and you have made mention of this, that are walking around that are already twice dead, yeah. although they're physically alive. Because they have had to know God, know the truth, and then publicly reject it as an initiation rite into the satanic system that they're in. And that, basically, they become the dead, or, the, you know, the, the vampires, the zombies, the... The, the Grateful Dead. <laughs> the werewolves. <laughs> yeah, whatever. The Grateful Dead, by the way. There's two members of the Grateful Dead who are uh, participants in the Bohemian Club and Bohemian Grove, uh, providing, uh, I, I'm not sure if they provide any entertainment or not, but it's just interesting how two of them are, have been listed as members of it. And um, that would make sense since they're the Grateful Dead. And then what does that tell us about the world leaders that are there? They must be twice dead, too. Now, now this, what you're mentioning now, brings up an incredibly interesting study. Now, I know among Christians there's this, this huge belief that once you get saved, you're always saved, and so forth, and if you, if you don't believe that, then you're, you know, you're worth being put out the pasture, and we're going to disfellowship. Mm-hmm. But you have to take a look at, I mean, people really do have to take a serious look at the verses in Hebrews where it talks about this. You know, Hebrews chapter 6, uh, verse 4 and 6 actually talks about this. Now it says, it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing that they crucified themselves the Son of God afresh, put them to an open shame. Now that word fall, shall fall away, that is actually 38, uh, 3895 in your strongest concordance with anybody that wants to check that. And a word actually means to apostatize. But what is apostasy? I mean, how is apostasy different than, say, any other sin? Well, apostasy actually has to do with knowing the truth actually and then openly rejecting it. And speaking against it, and that's exactly what you're saying, Seth. You know, these the Satanists understand this. They know what the plan of God is. They know what the Word of God has to say, and they come out 
publicly speaking against and working against it, like Anton LaVey, when he was asked if he believed in God, and he said yes, but he was actively working against them. This is not your normal sin. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the sin that I would say is unto death. Now, here's something else interesting. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, it says this, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice but a fearful looking for the judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Now that word, knowledge, is actually 1922 in your strong concordance, and it means full discernment. That's what that word means. Uh, it's used very simply now, so we can understand what we're talking about here. It's used very similarly to what Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ the malice that. That word know is actually 1097, and it means to be fully acquainted with. So these words are connected. We're not talking about people in Hebrews who did not get saved and not know God. These people actually knew God and then openly rejected him. Very, very, very serious. Right. Well, that's, and that is the definition of the satanic initiation. It is a public rejection. It's not, you know, people focus on all the perversions and all the things they do rather than on what's going on spiritually. Uh, all those things are just, you know, uh, anti-God things. But the main thing is public rejection or like a public baptism. This would be the anti-baptism, a public rejection of God, knowing that God exists, knowing and having tasted of the fruits of God, having perhaps been, you know, uh, been a, a witness to God or to, to have been baptized uh, you, you know, in the in the church or baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or whatever, you know, because you knew God and, and, and you were blessed by God. And then to stand before the satanic congregation and basically through your actions, words, etc., reject God openly and join the group. That is apostasy. That is apostasy. And I would, I would submit that that is one of the sins that is unto death. A sin unto death. Okay, so, so you go to that point, which is the, that, that's the basic Satan, Satan 101 initiation rite. Okay, just like the 101 initiation rite into Christ would be, you know, belief, obviously, and then we're commanded to be baptized, to make a public showing of right. that faith, to, to publicly acknowledge our, you know, to, to not just uh, say we believe, but it's, it's, all, all, it's a dedication of our souls and a pledge to serve God and God only, you know, it, it, it becomes more than just a idle belief. It, it, it's a, it's a, you're, you're pledging action. You're dedicating your life to the Lord at that point before the community. And you're rejecting um, the world and the evils of the world, Satan's world, if you will, and acknowledging God is the supreme of all things, and you will serve him, and him only will you serve, and you state that publicly. Interestingly right. enough, a lot of these Satanists who are involved in churchianity and so forth go through these rituals baptizing people, and I can only imagine what's in their mind. In some way, they're trying to almost secretly, you know, initiate them into the, satan the satanic side by way of baptizing them in these things called churches, which, um, you know, we have no... We have no ability to know if those are churches when they have a steeple and a little shingle for Jesus and a cross on there. That doesn't mean it's a church, but they call it that. You know, for the un unwitting that can go in there and become brainwashed and mind-controlled or controlled by these wolves in sheep's clothing, which apparently in the end times, I mean, obviously in Matthew 24, it talks about um, a lot of uh, wolves in sheep's clothing and a lot of uh, Christ and uh, prof false prophets and all kinds of things cropping up. We all keep growing. And I don't, I'm not who I was 20 years ago. I didn't have a clue about a lot of things that I understand now. It's a growth thing. And it's not, a, a gr the word growth in the New Testament is oxano uh, in the Greek. And it means to grow 
um, naturally, like simply, like you can't go out and when you see a seed popping up through the ground, you can't grab a hold of that little sprout and jerk on it real hard and make it grow faster. It's a growth thing. And we all have to recognize that everyone's in a different place. Right. And accepting, and, accepting that this would be a reality is a huge shift in consciousness. I mean, yeah. if you accept that the satanic organized evil, okay, in Satanism is a reality in the world in terms of world leadership and world power. If you ignore, and the Bible says it, but I guess people don't really believe it because it's, it's hidden from view uh, from the masses, let's say. But if you understand that that's what's behind so many of the wars, so much of the uh, of things that seem to be mysterious, assassinations, all kinds of things are happening. And if you understand that, that these people have allegiance with Lucifer, allegiance with Satan, and then that that's why things are going on the way they go on, and you realize that the entire world is all about getting control of those human souls, in other words, all of this, all this trauma, all this pain, and I guess people are going to have to go through major wars and violence and what it's really all about even that is they want control of the soul if there was no human soul here on earth would there be a demonic or a satanic no there would not be because that's what it's all about it's all about getting those souls that's it that's where the power comes from right and and each one of us even the even the ones who believe that Jesus is our Lord and that God raised him from the dead. You know, the Romans 10.9 is the beginning point uh, to, when, you, when you actually really, truly believe that. Um, then there's this growth thing, and every one of us is going to um, have a, a, a give an account for everything we did. Some of it will be a loss of rewards when we screwed it up. And some of it will be great rewards for all eternity for where we actually got out of the way and allowed God in Christ to work through us to bring others up. Well, to me, it's also about pain management. I mean, if you're you're consciously aware. Oh, God, it hurts. Watching it happen. You're in pain. It's like a daily, hourly thing, just managing that pain. And I suppose there's some of us who have been in pain for a long time or very empathic, very sensitive people who are in pain and who have been traumatized and are trying to heal from that. And that can take an entire lifetime. That's right. You know, for for someone to heal from being betrayed by parents, by teachers, by others that were significant others in charge of that child. And then, you know, some of these grew up to be criminals and different ways of of offloading, it's really about, you know, offloading the pain. A wise person will, you know, not everyone wants to be a martyr and have all the pain on themselves, and the satanic offers a way to offload that pain onto other people. Uh, So right there, there's a huge problem. But, you know, being aware of all this stuff and being aware of the uh, different spirits and being aware of the society and the organization, being aware of your own town, you know, makes it difficult at times just to get to the marketplace, just to get to an appointment, just to, you know, deal with the normal day-to-day stuff when you can see the evil going on underneath and you wonder, am I going to be the next one picked off here? Am I going to survive uh, going to the mechanic? Am I going to survive um, being able to be get through the day without falling into a huge depression? Am I going to survive uh, being able to handle this cognition or consciousness Um, for the rest of the day. It's easier, sure, if I jump into a cause, like it's them over there. They're the cause, and they're causing it. So let's go get them. Let's stand against them and protest. Okay, that's a a level of pain management, but it's not the end-all and be-all. It will not deliver you into peace at all. The, the, you know, well, us, us versus what about, them. What about, um, like when that, I was targeted for a while, and that was when I was doing the comment line for you-know-who. And um, <laughs> you know, to, the you know point who. Of, to the point of um, someone did something awful to my car with some kind of, uh, the best the mechanic could figure out was it had to be either a laser thing or they had some way of injecting uh, acetone up into... Uh, a part of the car that you couldn't even get to, and it completely melted all the wiring covering oh, wow. off, a, off of a, uh, a module that controlled the transmission. And when they finally got the car all apart and found it, it was like, how in the world could all the c- plastic covering be gone from 
20 wires all exactly the same. Wow. Where they were all touching together and then shorting out. Dude, I was, I was getting that, polluted about Thursday, man. That sounds very I, I was starting to think that, oh, my Dad. goodness, look at all this electronic stuff that's melting down around me. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. I've achieved this new skill to be able to psychically melt down electronics. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I thank you. I, I thank you for calling in here, Melissa, for, for, for one reason. <laughs> To, to so that you know to to temper my Roseanne Barr reaction and Jeff what else I would just like to say is that when you see these creatures these these soulless vampires <laughs> like what they do just go in to the place of father do you see what they're trying to freaking do to me again would you please take care of that in the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. I was listening take to the protection. Psalms. Yep. I definitely do that. Amen. Uh, we definitely have to do take that. Their butt spiritually so that they Great. can drive into a wall or whatever it takes to get them off of you and walk around with a, uh, you know, and David called it a hedge of protection. Uh, I picture it more like a bubble of uh, protection around me. Um, you know, yeah, where, yeah. where they just, they might try, but they can't get through. See, here's my problem. This is where I'm, I have not healed. I keep marveling at why would they do that? I, you know, like the little kid in me will say, why, are, why are they doing that? I didn't do anything to them. <laughs> <laughs> While going through therapy one time and couples counseling, what the therapist told me was just because you wouldn't do it, doesn't mean that the other person doesn't do yeah. it. You've got yeah. to stop thinking of them as the way you deal no, with them. No, I know. They're I, not I, like you. I understand. It's just hard for me to understand. It's hard to understand. It's hard to, to deal with when you could have a perfectly, and Frankie knows this well, where you could have a perfectly good day going. And then no, no, man. There, there's no little envelope of protection out there, man. They're, they're just purely manifesting, and I don't care anymore. I just, you know, I look ah, at it, and there it is. Wow, awesome. Okay. How about that? Okay. I might think about it later. Let me get a it last comment. My feelings, but last comment from uh, Jim and 